Did you know that most drummers who give up blame their kit setup? No, well, that's because I made that up, but it could easily be true. Don't be a statistic. So you've got this big pile of drums and you're not entirely sure what to do with them and whenever you put them together they end up looking more like this and you wonder why it hurts to play them. Well in this lesson I'm going to show you how to set up a basic five piece drum kit and I'm going to give you five golden rules for setting up any drum kit. Welcome to Beginner Drums. First of all there is no right and wrong way of setting up a drum kit. So don't worry about getting things exactly the way that I'm going to be talking about here. You set it up how you're comfortable playing the kit. And you'll find over the years and over time, you'll find you'll adjust bits of the kit and you'll get things exactly how you like it. But this is just really a, a basic guide so you understand from square one, from first getting your kit, you've got no idea how to set it up this should give you a good grounding on, on where to start. Technically, we're gonna be starting with a bass drum, but you'll not be able to see the stool very well once the bass drum's in. I've got little marks on the floor as to where I'm gonna be putting it. And the main reason for that is because otherwise the lighting and the camera stuff won't really match up. So that's the only reason why I've got these slightly bizarre marks all over the floor. With a stool, Again, have the stool at a height that's comfortable. I've got my legs pointing down slightly at a slight angle. You can probably see there, um, that they're not quite horizontal. They're just at a slight angle pointing downwards. So, first thing first, bass drum. Line it up on me dots. So the reason I'm starting with the bass drum, as opposed to anything else, is that the bass drum's the harder thing to move around. Get that in the right place and then work away from there. When you're setting the bass drum up, you want to make sure that the spurs at the front are fully extended and that they're pointing forwards, not backwards. If you have, you can have these at any angle you want, you see. But if you point them backwards, like that, it's not going to work, your bass drum's going to flop forward, so you don't want that. So, point them forwards slightly. Most bass drums have got spikes. I'd, I find I never really need to use the spikes. If you do find that your bass drum's drifting away from you, you might want to use the spikes on it. With these particular ones, you just screw this back and the spikes extend out like that but you don't want to be using spikes if you can get away with it because they will damage whatever floor surface you're on and you don't want to be getting a bill from whatever club you're working in. So put them away, then use that locking nut there to keep it held in position. The next thing to do is to put your bass drum pedal and hi-hats in. I use a double bass drum pedal, but it's exactly the same rules if you're just using a single pedal. Connect up your bass drum pedal and then get your hi-hats and position them comfortably with the pedal under your left foot, assuming you're right-handed, that is. Get yourself behind the kit, get one foot on the bass drum, and you just want your legs at a comfortable distance apart. You don't want your legs over here. That would be ridiculous. At the same time, if you have your legs really close together, you're not going to have enough room for your snare drum. So this distance works really well for me. And you'll see, once we get the snare drum in, I really couldn't have them much closer together than that. So we're gonna do the snare drum next. So the snare drum, I have in the gap between my two bass drum pedals, or between your bass drum and your hi-hat. So there we go, so that's where my snare drum's going. That's quite comfortable, it means I can use a double bass pedal as I say, you couldn't get it any closer, my knees will hit the, the snare drum. But that's a, that's a comfortable kind of distance there, and that can get onto my high hat nicely. In terms of the height of the snare, I have it at roughly waist height, and that works quite well for me. I can get on rim shots, I can do normal snare playing, and it works at a comfortable height. So then, once you've got your snare at a comfortable height, 
get your hi-hats in a comfortable height relative to your snare drum. Once you're comfortable with the position of your bass drum, snare and hi-hats, it's time to add some toms. Now this kit, and pretty much any piece of drum hardware that you buy, um, will have a thing known as memory locks on them. I'll probably do a, a separate video on memory locks just so you can understand the best way of using them. The great thing about memory locks, the whole point of it, is that you don't have to think about where you're putting it. Once you've got it to, to the right height, you set your memory lock at the right position, and then I know that's the right height for that tom. But you don't know what the height, right height for your toms are because this is the first time you're setting up the kit. So, for the minute, if you've got memory locks, loosen them all so they're not getting in the road. So this is a five piece fusion kit and that normally means you get two toms that mount on the bass drum and the low tom mounts on a cymbal stand. It's actually more common for the low tom to stand on its own three feet, known as a floor tom. Either way, we've got three toms here high, mid and low. So with the toms, you really want to start by getting your high and mid toms in the right place relative to your snare drum. So the way I like to have it is to have my toms as low down as it can possibly get without hitting the bass drum, but also not trying to be at too much of a steep angle. And my mid tom is relative to my high tom. It's at about roughly the same height and roughly the same angle as the mid tom. So play your kit and move your toms to the most comfortable and natural position. And remember what might be comfortable for you might not be comfortable for someone else. Ultimately it's up to you how you set up your kit. Once your toms are done, the final thing to do is add your cymbals. Now again, with this kit, it might be slightly different on yours, but with this kit, with this being a mounted tom, my mounted tom's attached to my ride cymbal stand. So that goes there. So the crash cymbal, I've got in this nice little gap here between my hi-hat and my hi-tom and it's not impinging on anything. Always check when you're putting your cymbals in that when you hit them they're not going to hit any drums and that's fine there. It gets a lot trickier when again in, in my full kit configuration I've normally got a couple of, a, a couple of splash cymbals here as well um, and it can get a little bit tricky to get uh, the crash cymbal and the two splash cymbals in a position where they don't hit each other but in this setup where we've just got a crash here, a ride here, it's nice and simple. So the crash cymbal, I don't want it ridiculously high. If it's all the way up here, that's not, if I'm doing a roll from, um, from a high tom or something and I, I need to hit the crash cymbal, I don't want to be hitting it all the way up here. So that's just a comfortable height for me. So remember there's no rights and wrongs. You set it up how it's comfortable. If you've already got it set up in a, a way that works for you, Leave it at that, you know, you can always tweak it over time. As I say, this is more for people who are, are new to drums and they want to have their kit set up right from square one. Finally, here's five golden rules to remember when setting up a drum kit. Rule number one, make sure no part of your kit is rubbing on any other part of your kit. Metal on metal will rattle and eventually scratch your nice shiny hardware. Metal on wood will scratch your lovely drums within a matter of seconds. Rule number two, your cymbals should never be touching anything metal. Make sure your cymbal tilters always have a plastic or rubber bush between the screw thread and your cymbal. Rule number three, make sure your cymbals always have the correct size felts on the top and bottom. Remember, metal on metal is bad. Rule number four, make sure your hi-hat clutch always has a felt or rubber on both sides of your top cymbal and that the bottom cymbal isn't touching any metal at all. And finally, rule number five, if you're not using rubber feet on your stands, make sure you protect the floor with mats or a proper drum rug. Spikes are sharp and can easily damage floors. 
So just remember when playing drums, you want to make life easy for yourself. If you find that one of your drums is in a position that just doesn't feel natural, move it. Nothing should feel strained or awkward when moving around your kit. And remember, we're all different. Just because your favorite drummer has his kit set up in a particular way, doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. Your kit setup should be as unique as you. And that's a beautiful thing, man. Yeah, whatever. See you on the next one, and don't forget to subscribe.